Hello and welcome back to Women's Football Talk, the YouTube channel that brings you all the latest news and stories from around the world of women's football. Now before we get into today's video, make sure you drop the like and subscribe to this channel so you never miss a video of ours. So today we are going to be looking at the start of the Euro 2025 qualification process. It gets underway this week for England in what is seen as the group of death. Alongside Torina Wiegmann's side is obviously Sweden, who they play first, Republic of Ireland and France. Now obviously we all know England are the current reigning champions of the European Championships after winning it on home soil back in 2022. But after a disappointing to 2023, Serena Wiegmann will be hoping that her England side can bounce back to the joys of 2022 and get their qualification process for the road to Switzerland off to the perfect start. So what is in it? What is it that is up for England? So um, obviously it is a very much a uh, tough group many are seeing it as the group of death with such quality uh, opponents and obviously how uh, England have been a bit wayward with their results and games especially if you look back at the Nations League uh, to the latter part of 2023 and so some important things to look forward to to for the, uh, this international break. Leah Williamson is fully back and is uh, in contention to play her first serious bit of minutes. She was meant to be in the last international break for Serena Wiegmann but had to pull out due to injury and there had been some injury concerns for uh, the Arsenal defender heading into this international break but uh, the captain of England seems to be fit and been able to go uh, from the start potentially. How, what her minutes look like it obviously remains to be seen um, obviously she's slowly making her way back from her ACL injury um, and obviously during the Conti Cup final for Arsenal she went off at half time so what minutes uh, Leah can put out for Serena Wiegmann it remains to be seen and then you got to look at some of the other players that are in there how will Lauren James do we know what kind of form uh, she's in absolutely firing on all cylinders can she continue to shine uh, like she has been for Chelsea this season Jess Park can she get some uh, more serious minutes obviously we know what she's been able to do at Manchester City in 2024 with obviously getting more games due to Jill Rawls injury and how well she's been performing um, it's definitely going to be an interesting uh, selection for Serena Wiegmann. Got some players that are playing absolutely brilliantly for club football. Uh, can they translate it, obviously, into this more meaning uh, for in terms of the international stage? Because obviously the last international break, there were just a couple of friendlies, but these ones very much uh, the start of something meaningful for uh, Serena Wiegmann's side if they are looking to retain the title of European champions. If we look at the opponents for this international break, though, they start off with a game against Sweden on Friday evening. Now Sweden, uh, obviously we know some of the players from the WSL, the likes of Zuzira Musevic, Filipa Agendal, Hannah Benison, just to name a couple. It is going to be a very tough ask for England and it is going to be a very big ask. Can they keep the likes of uh, Kosovari, Aslani quiet as well? The uh, forward knows how to put in a dangerous performance and score lots of lots of goals. And another young player that Sweden have got coming through the ranks is Rosa Kafaji, coming from uh, BK Hacken, if you've watched any of the Women's Champions League this season, you'll see how well she has done for BK Hacken and there's rumours going around of potential summer move to a big club. Whether that happens, obviously, that remains to be seen, but she is definitely a player. If she's playing, I think can cause England a few problems and I think it'll be interesting to see how Serena Wiegmann could um, get them uh, lining up to try and defend her and the rest of the players that we have previously mentioned. Elsewhere, obviously in a few days time, they will play the Republic of Ireland. We know obviously Katie McCabe and Denise O'Sullivan, um, just to name a couple of players. You would say for England, that is obviously the easier of the games that they have in this international break, but it is a bit of the unknown because they haven't played uh, the Republic of Ireland in over 37 years. Um, at a competitive level so obviously pass form doesn't mean anything we can't really look at how republic of ireland are doing they're starting to be a bit of a build-up of a nation in terms of the quality of women's football and the quality of players that they are producing so uh two different uh, types of games to, to expect for england a much tougher tactical game is what i'm expecting with the game against sweden and then a bit of an easier game against the Republic of Ireland, but obviously nothing is fully plain sailing. So that is how uh, England's qualifying process looks. We have the rest of the campaign obviously uh, kicking off for all the other teams today. Obviously big favourites and all eyes will probably be on uh, the Spanish national team 
as they look to uh, continue their year of dominance after winning the uh, FIFA Women's World Cup and then uh, the UEFA Nations League. So all eyes will be on Spain as the big favourites. You then you've got to look at how will the Netherlands do in their group, how will uh, Belgium and Denmark get, in, get on in the group alongside Spain. You look at um, Uli Gay 4, you've got Austria and Germany, and then obviously the hosts, uh, Switzerland themselves, how will they get on in their uh, qualification group alongside Azerbaijan, Hungary, and Turkey. So plenty of action to look forward to. Uh, we do have an article out on our Substack page, womensfootballtalk.substack.com, which Brad has done looking at a bit of the England international break and how they could do. Uh, we'll have updates throughout the game on our X page, so just type in WF Talks there. And make sure you're following us on Instagram as well for other news updates, women's football talk. And then uh, next week after the games are completed, we will have a full roundup of that on our podcast, Women's Football Talk, available on all podcast platforms in the meantime make sure you like and subscribe and turn on the post notification bell so you never miss a video of ours here and we'll see you next time